salmon undergo one of the most amazing transformations on Earth. First looking something like this, and then morphing into something like this. They are known well for their striking red colors and hooked jaws which manifest during the spawn. They are also known for their incredible migration from saltwater to freshwater. Salmon are one of the world's most highly favored sport fish for a number of reasons, be it their fight, their incredible locations that they are found, their taste, or perhaps just the intriguing story of their transformative life cycle. Most salmon are anadromous, meaning that they spend the majority of their lives in the oceans and then make an incredible journey to freshwater rivers to spawn. If you've seen my other videos in this series, you know that there's a focus on the range maps of the species that I cover. The range maps may not be as applicable in this video because of how salmon migrate throughout their life cycle. So for example, if a range map shows that the pink salmon exists inland on the Kenai Peninsula of Alaska, you shouldn't expect to go fish for pink salmon at any particular time of the year, as they won't always be there. The information on each species may slightly vary depending on location, as most of these species inhabit a very large area and populations may develop differences over time. The pink salmon is one of five salmon species of the North American Pacific. It is the smallest of the Pacific salmon species, commonly reaching just a few pounds in weight. Prior to spawning, the males develop a pronounced hump behind their head and in front of their dorsal fin. As adults, these fish are usually 20 to 25 inches and about 3 to 5 pounds. In most cases, pink salmon only run in significant numbers on the even years. So for example, 2022, 2024, and so on. They typically begin the run in late July, and then the run continues and grows through the middle towards the end of August. The best time to catch them is during late July and the first half of August when the fish are still healthy and fresh. Their native range stretches down the Pacific coast from Alaska all the way to California. In 1956, about 2,100 pink salmon were accidentally introduced into a tributary of Thunder Bay in northwestern Lake Superior. I'd like to know how you accidentally introduced 21,000 fish several thousand miles from where their native range is, so if anybody has more information on that, I'd love to hear from you. But however that came to be, there are now a population of pink salmon dispersed throughout the Great Lakes. Pink salmon is often harvested and exported as canned salmon rather than fresh fillets as they aren't considered as delectable as their bigger cousins. However, as a personal side note, when I spent some time in Alaska a few years ago, we grilled up a few fillets of pink salmon out alongside the river we were fishing and I thought they tasted absolutely fantastic. But apparently if you've grown up in Alaska or Western Canada, raised on Chinook salmon, you might disagree. I remember being a bit confused at the name of this fish until I started to fillet one, soon thereafter coming to the realization that the name pink comes from their pinkish flesh. Next is chum salmon. Chum salmon is probably most well known for being the least tasty of the salmon species. Another name for this fish is dog salmon, which, as you may have guessed, comes from the fact that fishermen would often throw the salmon to the dog as they had much tastier species at their fingertips. As of making this video, I haven't personally eaten this species, so I don't have any opinion on whether or not the fish actually tastes that bad. Taste aside, I personally really like the beautiful markings of the chum salmon. To me, it looks like green, purple, and red paint has drizzled down their sides, and each fish is entirely unique. The chum salmon is the second largest species of the Pacific salmon. It lacks the large hump of the pink salmon, but it has a deeper body than most of the salmonoid species. Adults usually weigh around 10 to 20 pounds with an average length of 24 inches, but they have been known to grow over 3 feet. The runtime varies, but typically chum salmon return to northern rivers from June to September, and to more southerly rivers in August through November. Coho salmon, also known as silver salmon, originate from the northern Pacific, but they were also introduced into Lake Michigan in 1966 and are still stocked there by the thousands. Some populations in Lake Superior are now self-sustaining. During their ocean phase, the coho salmon have dark, fine spots along their back as well as the upper portion of the tail fin. During the spawn, males have largely curved upper and lower jaws, and like the other spawning salmon species, will turn red. Coho salmon average 20 to 28 inches, or 7 to 11 pounds. The maximum length for a coho is thought to be around 43 inches. 
The timing of the coho salmon run varies depending on location, but in general the run of this species tends to be from September through December. Chinook salmon, which is also commonly known as king salmon, are the most prized of all the salmon on this list. They are not only the largest salmon on earth, but they have a reputation for being the best tasting as well. They turn a spectacular red during the spawn and put up an unimaginable fight due to their sheer size. When found in the oceans or in the early stages of the run, the Chinook is a blue-green on the back and on the top of the head with silvery sides. It has black spots on its tail and the upper half of its body. Although spots are seen on the tail in pink, coho, and chum salmon, Chinook are unique among the Pacific salmon in combining the black spots and silver on the tail. Confusion with other species is often rare simply because of how big these giants are. An average size for an adult Chinook is around 3 feet or 36 inches and about 30 pounds. However, there are records of this fish growing nearly 5 feet and weighing over 100 pounds, which just blows my mind. When you hear of people going up to Alaska for the fishing trip of a lifetime, it is often in pursuit of this species. Chinook have also been introduced into the Great Lakes and can be found in those tributaries for the spawn. Generally, the spawn for Chinook occurs in August through the fall months. Sockeye are blue, tinged with silver in color while living in the ocean. When they return to the spawning grounds, like the other salmon, they undergo a massive transformation and their bodies become red and their heads turn green. The appearance of the sockeye salmon is often used as an icon to portray salmon in paintings or movies. A fully grown sockeye salmon is usually 18 to 30 inches. These fish, unlike the other species of Pacific salmon, feed extensively on zooplankton. This feeding behavior gives them a delicious flavor and prevents them from accumulating mercury as much as the more predatory salmon. If you live somewhere that is not the Pacific coast, you may know these salmon by a different name, kokanee. Kokanee salmon is the landlocked version of the sockeye salmon. These salmon never come in contact with salt water and complete their life cycle completely inland. They are the same species as the sockeye, yet they possess some slight differences due to their freshwater life. The kokanee salmon on average is much smaller than the sockeye, often only reaching 14 inches as an adult. This is the only salmon species found here in my home state of Utah. As you can see on this map, their range extends much further inland than the other salmon species. This is because of the inclusion of the kokanee salmon. Like most other Pacific salmon, the sockeye salmon dies after the spawn, living only once to complete this journey. However, unlike the Pacific salmon species, the Atlantic salmon can survive after spawning and return to sea to repeat the process again in another year. However, only 5-10% to usually return to the sea to spawn again. Such individuals can grow to extremely large sizes, although they are very rare. The Atlantic salmon is a close relative to the brown trout, and both species share some physical characteristics. Most Atlantic salmon are anadromous, meaning that they spend portions of their lives in both saltwater and freshwater. However, there are some populations of landlocked Atlantic salmon, similar to the kokanee salmon. Adult Atlantic salmon generally grow to be 28 to 30 inches, but specimens that spend more time in the ocean can grow to be much larger, with records being as big as 63 inches. Atlantic salmon is the most consumed of all the salmon species, most of these salmon coming from salmon farms across the northern Atlantic. The populations of wild Atlantic salmon have long been in decline, and there are now efforts being taken to preserve the species from further decline. If you found this video informative or helpful in any way, please consider subscribing, liking, or sharing. This is a free way that you can support me in my efforts in making these videos. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.